Okay, good morning, welcome back to another vid. So this is going to be an unboxing of the Verve Urban Hymns. This is the 20th anniversary remastered edition, which they've just recently brought out uh, earlier this month in September. Now, it was 20 years ago to the day, the 29th of September, 1997, when this album came out. Obviously, the chances are you're watching this video not on the 29th of September. But uh, yeah, 20 years today. Now, I'm not going to lie, I did buy it in 1997, but I didn't buy it on release day. I know I can look really cool and say I did, and maybe you did, uh, but I didn't. But I did buy all the singles leading up to it, and then a couple after that came out later on in 97 and early 98. But, um, but I did buy it probably maybe a month after it came out, and it's a fantastic album. And what they've done here is essentially, obviously because it's 20 years since it was released, they've remastered it. So I believe they've got the standard CD edition, which is just a normal CD in a dual case with two CDs in there. They probably, I didn't check this, but I imagine they've got the standard vinyl, just a reissue of the, the standard um, tracks on uh, from Urban Hymns. And then what they've got is they've got two limited edition box sets. Well, actually, they're not entitled limited edition, but I'm going to hazard a guess they're somewhat limited. Uh, but they're essentially box sets. You get this one, which is the vinyl one, which we're going to do the unboxing for. But there's another one called the Super Deluxe Edition. Now, with that, you get five CDs and a DVD. I believe the DVD set contains a documentary from 1999. Uh, I think they call it the videos, 1996 to 98 or something like that. Uh, it was only previously available on VHS, so it's good that that's now out. Even though it was widely available, I think there were some videos of it on YouTube as well. Uh, but it's nice to be officially out. You get four performances from the Jules Holland Show from 1997, November time, I think. Uh, you get the Hay Hall gig on DVD. I'm surprised it wasn't Blu-ray, but you get it on DVD. And I think that's the first time that's officially been released. So that's good. And you also get a 56-page hardback book, uh, as well as a poster and five postcards. So you get quite a lot for your money with the CD edition. Some of that you do not get in this. So I guess if you're a hardcore Verve fan and you love Urban Hymns, then you may want to consider getting the CD Super Deluxe Edition set, as well as maybe the vinyl set if you're into your vinyl. So, um, yeah, some of that you don't get on this. Now, I think another difference, actually, that I've just uh, remembered, is on the CD edition, what, on the Super Deluxe 5 edition, uh, 5 CD edition, oh, that's a mouthful, what you get is an extra CD's worth of tracks from the BBC evening session, if anyone remembers that back in the day when Radio 1 was massive. Uh, I'm guessing by evening session it was probably Steve Lamack and Joe Wiley, they used to do that, didn't they? That's when I used to listen to it anyway. So, uh, but I've not ch uh, checked the track list on that. So whilst you don't get that CD or that vinyl in here, what you do get, and I'll kind of show it without revealing the code, what you do get in, in this uh, vinyl box set is you get a code, a download code. And basically that download code entitles you to download everything from the Super Deluxe Edition CD set, basically. Um, so obviously you don't get the hardback book, you don't get the DVD, but anything uh, on the CD you can download. So if that kind of makes sense. But let's show you what you get with the, um, the vinyl set. So this is, like I say, it's Urban Hymns, the front cover. Absolute classic front cover going on there. And then all on the sides, you've just got simply the Verve Urban Hymns. Pretty bland, but pretty striking. On the back, you've got the track list. What I may do, and I may have started to have done it already, I'm not sure. But I might either cut away from the video from time to time and show pictures. Or maybe have them in um, half the screen or taking up a window or something like that. Just so you can see close-ups. Because I know the camera's a little bit far away. Um, but yeah, so that photograph there, I believe, is from Hay Hall back in 1998. But we may slightly elaborate on that in a second. So if we turn it around, open this up. So it's just literally just a top of the box, which comes off very simply. Reveals a lovely colour there, a kind of neon sort of yellowy green colour. It looks really striking. In fact, I'll probably elaborate on that again, actually, in a second. So yeah, I'll, I'll leave that bit. In here, what we get, let me just move that just in case. Um, what we get here is the, the cellophane, That's, this was on the front of the box, like the plastic kind of wrapper. I'm one of those weird people who keeps it, because it's got stickers on. I'm not going to put it back on the box, of course, but uh, I like to keep it. Maybe you're the same, I don't know. I know some people throw it away. Uh, you do what you do with it, I guess. Now this here, if I just hide the code, that's basically just what I was talking about a minute ago. Uh, this gives you all the uh, tracks from the CD edition, the Super Deluxe set, that you can download that aren't on this vinyl. So that's good. Uh, and you can obviously download all the tracks as well that are on the van as well. So basically all the CD tracks, all the music tracks that are on the Super Deluxe Edition CD set, you can download 
if you buy the vinyl sets. So what we've got here is, this is what I'm going to elaborate on. So if you look at this, for anyone who's a Verve fan, if you think of the, the uh, what was it, Lucky Man video. Lucky Man video, where they're in London, uh, looking out on the Thames, I think, in that studio apartment. It looks really, really nice. Like the sun's shining in, the water. It's a great, great video. And as Richard Ashcroft is walking down the stairs, I think, at the start, then on the post, on the wall, there's a poster, like, framed. And it's basically this, without urban hymns, but it says the Verve. And it's basically this colour. So that's a really nice kind of touch. And this is essentially a 20-page booklet with, I believe, uh, some unreleased photographs. I know in the 56 hardback book in the CD set, I'm pretty certain all of those are exclusive photographs as well. And I, I think this is probably the same. So I don't know if you can see these, but as I say, what I'll do is I will put uh, some photographs up or some video up in the corner or I'll cut away and you can see that. So they're all nicely taken. Maybe you've never seen them before. It's, you know, I mean, once you've seen it once or twice, it's not going to be something you're going to pull out and look at every now and again. Uh, sorry, regularly, but every now and again you will. It's just, it's a nice little extra just to have. You get a load of credits there, so I guess that's pretty standard. And um, so that's that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So we move on to the records. Now, these come, it's funny, if you've ever bought any records off Amazon, the packaging is basically like this in these kind of cardboard um, packaging, essentially. So the first one, as you can see, is Urban Hymn. So this is the album. Now at the back, I've pulled it out already, but it comes in these little flaps. They're quite easy to do. Sometimes when you put it back in, you've kind of got to slightly pull this out, but it's not a problem. So on the back, you'll get the track list. We all know the track list to uh, Urban Hymns, I'm sure. You get these little stickers here on this side that you can take off if you want. I don't know why you'd want to. I keep mine on. Uh, it's basically just a barcode, a reference number, and all that kind of stuff. So if we kind of carefully pull this out, so there's Urban Hymns, again, the classic front cover. Apologies if there's any glare. Sunny day, what can I say? There's the back, standard black. Open it up, some nice photographs there. And if we, I won't actually get everything out. Well, maybe I will, why not? So if we take the first record out, again, used to these images, I'm sure. Uh, if you want to just quickly check the record, it's the same on both sides. There we go, that's that one. And if I stick this back in, I guess really I don't have to put it back in. I could do this later. It's taking up extra seconds, isn't it? But I've started, so I'll finish, as Magnus Magnuson used to say. Um, there we go. That's one side. I think that's probably the back because on the other side, that's quite striking, quite artistic. Again, I wasn't going to show the record because it's just the same, but there we go. So that's that. So I will, in fact, put that to one side. There we go. Now we've got the next record. Of a couple of records, I guess, technically. Now, this one has got the B-sides. Yeah, there's some really good B-sides of, of the Verve. It's one of those bands. For me, the only other one that I can think of is Oasis, where most of their B-sides are good enough to get on to, uh, to the album, quite frankly. For me, anyway. I've always thought that of Oasis and the songwriting skills of, of Noel Gallagher, essentially. Now, I wouldn't quite say every song that Richard Ashcroft and the Verve write uh, which is a B-side, is good enough to be an A-side, but there's many which are. So some really good ones on here. Uh, for example, uh, Lord I Guess I'll Know is a good one. Uh, sorry, Lord I Guess I'll Never Know. So Sister, good track. Three Steps, Never Wanna See You Cry, The Longest Day. That's another good one. I guess that track list there was coming in handy for me to reel them off. So again, you get to see what's, what's on there. There's a few mixes on there. Now also you get a couple of tracks which are, um, I think, released for the first time apart from the greatest hits that came out in 2004. So if you look down the bottom there, and if you look at side four, you'll be able to see right at the bottom, uh, track number three, This Could Be My Moment, and then Monte Carlo. So both of these, I think the only time they've ever been on any Verve record or album was the greatest hits in 2004. And for me, it's a funny one uh, when it comes to This Could Be My Moment, because it doesn't, well, of course it sounds like a Verve song, but it's so out of place. It does not sound like an Urban Hymns era song. I guess ultimately that's why they didn't put it on the record. It sounds like something that could have been maybe on their next album or maybe even a previous album, almost in a sense, kind of harking back to sort of a Britpop era in a way. Uh, or if not, maybe that kind of early millennium kind of sound. So, um, yeah, it sounds out of place, but it's a really good song. If you've never heard it, and maybe the chances are you haven't, especially if you're just a casual Verve fan, then I definitely recommend checking out This Could Be My Moment. It's a brilliant track. So again, if we take the, uh, the record out, I'll just stick this to one side, put it away later, so we see the front cover. Again, these are the B-sides. And then you look at the, uh, the back. 
from a gig. I don't know what gig that is. There's the uh, the band in the middle. We'll take the records out. We'll have a look at the front cover and the records themselves. So this is the first one. Again, some nice artwork. I think these may be, again, exclusive photographs, but I do stand corrected. And that's, is that upside down? No, I think it is. I think it is upside down. Anyway, there you go. You, you get the picture. It's basically just the band. And then if we look at the second record, I'll take it out. And the artwork. There we go. Again, some nice photographs, possibly never seen before. And that's that. So yeah, the B-sides are really good. Some really good tracks on there. And so many of them could be interchangeable with A-sides. But then again, you know, if some of these B-sides did make it on Urban Hymns, you'd have to take some tracks off. And that could be very, very hard because there's so many good ones. I mean, again, just, I might as well just have it in front of me, actually. It's going to be on this side, isn't it? But I mean, just looking at things like Bittersweet Symphony, an amazing track, Sonnet, The Rolling People. So it starts off really strongly. And I tell you what, how Richard Ashcroft lost 100% of the royalties to Bittersweet Symphony is just a, oh, it's a travesty. It really is. He basically wrote the entire song. All the lyrics are his. The song is his. The, the bit at the start that everybody recognises was written essentially by the Verve, but just a tiny little sample, if you like. Um, and as a result of using that, then the Rolling Stones, well, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, get 100% of the royalties. How harsh is that? Now, it is worth noting that, at least to my knowledge, it's not the fault of Mick Jagger and uh, Keith Richards and the Rolling Stones, but you know what it's like when lawyers get involved. It's, it's all about money, and it's such a shame, because they're walking away, essentially, with... Um, with royalties and money for a song that they had nothing to do with, other than just a little bit of a sample. The song, the lyrics, the actual tune, it's Richard Ashcroft's song. It's terrible that he, um, he doesn't get a penny for that, but I'm sure he's a wealthy man, so I guess it is what it is. I'm surprised he's not maybe, you know, countersued them or I don't know how it works, but that's crazy. Anyway, so last but not least, what we've got is we've got Live at Hay Hall from the 24th of May, 1998. Now this was I think when the Verve were coming to the end of their world tour. I think after this they still had maybe a few gigs in Europe somewhere and I think also they had some in the States but this may have been the last one they had in the UK. They may have had a couple in Ireland after I'm not sure. But yeah so from the 24th of May 1998 and it was a triumphant gig uh, in Wigan where they're from and um, yeah it's the first time like I say it's been available on DVD officially on the Super Deluxe Edition CD set, and uh, maybe the first time available on uh, on vinyl as well, I'm guessing. But anyway, so there's the front cover, and I love that purple effect at the bottom. It looks really, really nice. I, mean, I don't know how well that picks up, but it looks really good. And at the back then, it's a bit of a blue and a kind of purple kind of uh, hint uh, all across the stage there. So that looks really, really nice. And then if we open it up, we can see more photographs from the Hay Hall gig. That looks nice. Then if we take the records out, it's the first one. That's a nice kind of artistic photograph there. And then on the back, there's the band. We'll have a look at the record. Again, they're all kind of standard black. I have to actually take this out. I know I should be touching this all over, but um, I'll clean it after, it's okay. So that's that, we'll stick that to one side. And then we'll take the last record out. And there we see the artwork, that's the back. Kind of a strange view to have there, but fair enough. <laughs> and then Richard Ashcroft celebrating triumphant return to uh, to Wigan. So that's that, and that's pretty much everything you get for for your money, quite frankly. So it's um, it's quite expensive for some. Like I say, it was ninety two dollars in total. I got it from Pledge Music. I did pre order it probably going back um, when was it? Like I don't know, a good few months ago now, and it arrived maybe a couple of weeks back. But I wanted to deliberately hold off until uh, until the 29th, which is today. And then I can upload the vid. 20 years to the day. Absolutely unbelievable. I guess you've got to decide whether it's worth it for you. It's a lot of money. $92 for this edition of vinyl. 45 quid, $61 for the CD, Super Deluxe Edition CD. Again, it's a bit of a mouthful, that. Uh, but you do get more content. I guess it just comes down to do you want CDs? Do you want vinyl? Uh, do you think you get enough for your money? That's really what it comes down to as well. A lot of people will think, well, for you know, pushing a hundred dollars, pushing seventy pounds, you don't really get a lot. But it depends, doesn't it? It's up to you. I'm pleased I've got it. Okay, so I thought I'd slightly fade myself down from that video, and uh, and revert back to this, my chops, my lovely chops on camera, and uh, yeah, just so I can sum up the album, talk about it a little bit more, 
There's a couple of things I want to say. I think the first thing I want to talk about, as quickly as possible, is just to go through the track list, not necessarily in any great depths, but I started to before, and uh, so we'll slightly elaborate on it. So yeah, it starts with Bittersweet Symphony, which is a fantastic track. I talked earlier on, of course, about the, the royalties, which is a crying shame. It was a brilliant song. Probably the most famous one on the, on the album. Then you've got Sonnet, which is another great track. Uh, the Role in People is brilliant. I really like it. So it gets off to a really good start. And it continues, really. I mean, The Drugs Don't Work is a fantastic song. A beautiful song, but a haunting song. I mean, if you listen to the lyrics, it's the kind of song that will put you in a seriously bad mood. Because it's so sad. It really is. Um, but I advise anyone, if you've been listening to The Drugs Don't Work, follow that up. Follow that song up by listening to Lucky Man because that is an amazing track, but maybe we'll come to that in a second. So anyway, after the drugs don't work, then the drugs definitely work, because there's two very much psychedelic tracks. There's Catching the Butterfly and Neon Wilderness, both really good songs. I like them a lot, uh, but definitely have that kind of edge to it, that kind of psychedelic uh, touch without question. Then you get Space and Time with some beautiful guitar work. It's a really nice track. Weeping Willow, I mean, it's not that I don't like it. It's decent, but yeah, I can kind of take it or leave it. Lucky Man, as I was touching upon a second ago, an amazing song. So you can go from being in a bad mood from the drugs don't work to being in an amazing mood. The best mood in the world after listening to Lucky Man. And it's a great video as well, as I mentioned earlier on. So my favourite track on the album. I don't know if that's going to be a popular choice or not, but it's my choice. And it's all subjective. We're all different. Uh, I just love the positivity and it just reminds me. It takes me back instantly to like, when would it have came out? Kind of November time? I think ish, give or take, of 1997. It just reminds me of that era. And then we've got um, One Day, which is uh, an absolutely amazing, amazing song. For me, not many people talk about One Day, but it's one of the best on the record, without question. It wasn't a single. It could have been. If they'd have released another one, if they'd have released five singles, then that maybe could have been the one, possibly. It's a brilliant song. Every time I listen to it, it just it almost gets better. But not many people talk about it. So check that out. Check out that track called One Day. It's amazing. You'll like it. I almost promise. And then we've got This Time, which is a, a fantastic track. Now, for me, it ends on a slightly, an ever so slightly limp note with Velvet Morning and Come On. Now, I do like the songs, but I don't think they're amazing. But they're still good, like I say. But what I would probably do, and I was talking about it before with some of the Verve B-sides, not all of them, but some of them are fantastic. And I could easily interchange, if it was up to me, maybe Velvet Morning and Come On, and possibly even Weeping Willow, possibly. I could sw uh, switch those around and swap them over for some B-sides, something like maybe uh, Lord, I Guess I'll Never Know, So Sister, and um, I don't know, maybe something like This Could Be My Moment. But then again, I did touch on that song before, didn't I? And it does feel a little bit out of place uh, because it's so kind of almost Britpop-esque in a weird way. It definitely doesn't fit Urban Hymns, so maybe, that is, maybe they made the best decision not putting that on this album, ultimately. So... Um, but yeah, that's a track list. It's, it's really good overall. It's a great album. I mean, I guess ultimately at the end of the day, I wouldn't change a track list because it, that's what makes this album. Uh, it's a fantastic record. And it's funny, I was watching uh, or reading actually a couple of retrospective Urban Hymns reviews, probably going back about a month or so now. And I don't know if it's just people trying to be all hip and cool, but they were slagging it off and saying, was it all that it was cracked up to be? Was it really that good? I don't know if they're doing that just to get you know attention and all the rest of it. Obviously, we all like different things, but for me, this is a classic album. It's got some great tracks on there. It's not the best album of the 90s. There's an argument to say it's not even the best Verve album, to be perfectly honest. Uh, maybe that's a discussion for another day. But it's still a great album. You can't ignore its significance. You know, back in the 90s, it was a fantastic record in its day. So, um, yeah, people who say it's not very good, I, I don't really know what, what planet they're living on, quite frankly. Now, the only other thing I'll say, and I'll end the video on this is that it's a real shame, not that it, I'm not ending it on a negative, uh, the positive will be that it's a, it's a great record and buy it and the box set and all the rest of it, but I've got to add this bit in, because what there should have been, there should have been an extra CD of unreleased studio songs, and that came about because the guitarist, Nick McCabe, and Cy Jones, who is the bass guitarist, well, at least it's a story I heard, they compiled this CD, they found it, it had been lost, uh, someone gave it to them, and uh, they, you know... Uh, Reimagine, well, did they reimagine? I guess maybe remastered some of the songs. They worked on it basically uh, to make them uh, remastered so they could put them on this 20th anniversary edition. That was the idea to put them on these box sets. 
And the only person to veto, the only person to veto this was Richard Ashcroft. Now, there's a lot of kind of bad blood, really, between Nick McCabe especially and Richard Ashcroft. Nick McCabe, the guitarist, has been sacked twice in the past. So maybe, I've no idea, so maybe, though, there's a bit of kind of uh, ill feeling still there, a little bit of bitterness. Uh, bitterness Symphony. Maybe we should have released that one. And But I don't know. But um, basically, Nick McCabe was saying, in a roundabout way, from the interview that I read, and, he, and you know, it was in print, so maybe the interviewer you know, could have slightly took him out of context. But from what I interpreted, Nick McCabe said that the reason that Richard Ashcroft vetoed these unreleased tracks, and there's some really good ones, by the way, one in particular called All Ways and Maybes. I'll put a link in the description box. Check it out. It should have been on the album. It's a brilliant track. So don't forget to, to look at that, um, to uh, click on that link and, and listen to the song and see what you think. But apparently the reason Nick McCabe says is uh, that Richard Ashcroft didn't want those songs on this uh, limited edition, the vinyl and the CD set for the 20th anniversary, because Richard Ashcroft only co-wrote them. And because it's not uh, a Richard Ashcroft song, then Richard Ashcroft apparently didn't like that because it's all about Richard Ashcroft, according to Nick McCabe. Um, so yeah, clearly there's still a bit of needle going on between those two. I don't know how true that is. I did read something else a while back that that song in particular called Always and Maybes was written exclusively by Nick McCabe, and then I read something else where Richard Ashcroft said he, Nick McCabe's got nothing to do with it, and he wrote it himself, Richard Ashcroft. So you've got two people essentially saying the same thing. At least that's what I read. I don't know if that's true. That's what I read. Maybe it's wrong. If you're a massive Fur fan, well, please let me know, because uh, I, I want to know the truth, if anyone does know the truth. But, uh, but that's a real shame, you know, that they're clearly still arguing with each other. Will they ever reform now as a result? You know, they've reformed, split, reformed, split in the past. Um, probably not, but I guess you can never say never. I think the only two bands off the top of my head, and there's probably more, but that I can think of that are massive that have never reformed, would be the Smiths and Slade. But apart from that, everybody else gets back together. So will it ever happen with the Verve? It's probably unlikely, but who knows? Who knows? So anyway, that's a shame because that track is really good and it would have been nice. I think a nice thing for the fans to have those extra tracks on this 20th anniversary box set. But I guess we'll have to wait maybe for the 25th edition, you know, or maybe the 50th edition. Maybe I'll do an unboxing of the 50th anniversary special. Imagine that. Never say never to that either. Um, but there we are. So thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'll be more than happy to tell you what you get if I maybe didn't go into it in enough detail. Uh, but yeah, it's quite expensive. It's not for everyone, but I like it. I'm glad I've got it. I do like the CD one. You do technically get more for your money in that set, but of course it's CDs, and if you're into your vinyl, well then the CD's pretty useless. But I, I probably at some stage in the future will get that CD set as well, probably. Uh, maybe if I do, I'll have it on either a, an unboxing vid or just one of my standard monthly vinyl vids. Maybe that's where it'll be, the time will tell. So yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. I'll have more of these kind of unboxings. This is my first one, so apologies if it's rough around the edges or maybe went on way too longer. Um, went on for way too much longer than we should have done. Just about got that sentence out. Um, so yeah, I'll probably start doing these unboxing things of these limited edition vinyls and sets maybe once a month. I think that's a, a, a decent amount. So anyway, thank you for watching. Until my next vid, I'll see you later.